Welcome back everybody. I'm Dr. Alex Spinoso. Today we're going to talk about the big kahuna, the rumble in the jungle, alcohol versus marijuana and the data and what it shows. First off, we're going to get right into deaths. Alcohol and alcohol related accidents account for more than 80,000 deaths a year. Now marijuana so far has accounted for zero. Now there was a news story a couple weeks ago, a young child got into some marijuana, it caused seizures and death. There was some gray area with that. Uh, there also have probably has been a lot less data on marijuana because of its illegality. One of the main factors of alcohol versus marijuana related deaths is likely toxicity. Now, studies show that it takes an incredible amount of THC inside marijuana. Studies show that it takes an incredible amount of THC, that's the active part of marijuana, in the body in order to create a toxic effect. It's about 15 grams concentrated in the body. Now, to give you an idea of how much 15 grams is, a little joint is about half a gram, which contains about 60 to 70 milligrams of marijuana. That means that a person would have to smoke roughly 150 joints over a 24 hour period to get into those toxic side effects that we're going to talk about later on. So it's almost impossible because after one or two joints, you know, people really aren't moving much, but to get to 150 would be pretty amazing. When it comes to marijuana and the concentration, each joint contains about 180 milligrams of THC. Now that is lessened if you smoke it, because if you burn marijuana, about 60% of the THC burns off, goes away. Now you have higher concentration of THC, THC in things like edibles and vaporizing, but still the amount of THC you'd have to get into your body is so astronomical. For edibles, you'd probably have to eat about 25 to 30% of your body weight in edibles to get to the concentration of THC uh, that is toxic. Now, alcohol, you know, is much different. Two, three drinks deep, sometimes you could be gone. In terms of the data about prescription meds, neither seem to be good with prescription meds. We have the data that shows that alcohol is really bad for the metabolism of prescription meds and the way prescription meds work. We have a lot less data for marijuana and how it affects prescription meds, but marijuana is used as a prescription med for a lot of different things. So it seems to have less effect uh, with the other medications, but more of that data is gonna come out as we go. As far as inhibitions, both of them are gonna lower it, you know that. Alcohol makes you a bit more aggressive, a bit more reckless. Marijuana slows you down, has you thinking a lot less slow. Some people say, oh, I think clearly on marijuana. Well, studies don't show that. You think pretty bad on alcohol, you think pretty bad on marijuana, period. It doesn't make you smarter, no matter how much you think it makes you smarter. One of the main differences that has yet to be resolved between alcohol and marijuana is that there is a set number of drinks that you're supposed to drink per week split into even male and female. There's a definition for alcoholism. There's a huge group of supporters for those who are uh, historically alcoholics or have problems with alcohol, both life related and just, you know, medically related. Marijuana doesn't have as much groups, probably because mostly it was illegal. So we don't know a lot in terms of the support groups. We don't know a lot in terms of what constitutes chronic marijuana use or you know addictive marijuana use. Most of the studies have shown that greater than five joints a week for three months or more is deemed chronic use. Using marijuana five times a week for greater than three months is the new definition for chronic use, but that's gonna change as we go uh, and learn more about it. In terms of violence, alcohol versus marijuana, there's no comparison really. Marijuana users statistically have less violence than anyone, and that includes people who don't do any drugs at all. Just walking around in your day-to-day -day life will make you more angry and commit more crimes than if you used marijuana. As we know, alcohol is a much different factor. Alcohol accounts for about 40% of crime-related incidents in the U.S. So 40% versus less percentage than if you were just walking around not smoking. That's a big difference. When it comes to driving, neither are smart. Don't do it. 
period. But what's the data show? They did a study where they took both alcoholics and people under the influence of alcohol with chronic smokers, which was, as we said, five times a week over the last three months. And they put them in a driving simulator. Now, the alcoholics were driving fast, driving reckless, swerving all over the place. The marijuana users were the complete opposite. They were super careful, hyper paranoid. In fact, they were driving so slow that the people running the test had to keep telling them to drive faster because they were driving about half the speed limit. I guess I was going about 65 tops. Seven, seven miles an hour. Just chilling out, man, driving nice and slow. And in terms of driving, one of the things that is coming up more difficult is how do you have a field sobriety test for marijuana? Uh, the current field sobriety test only picked up about 30% of people under the influence of marijuana in a study. So that's going to be changing. There's probably going to be some sort of different field sobriety test for marijuana. It is still driving under the influence, even though it's legal, you drive worse. So it is still driving under the influence. So be careful with that. You can't just say, oh, it's legal. I can drive now. Not true. So when it comes to side effects and uses, we all know the side effects of alcohol. Everybody sees it, it's thrown up in the news all the time. Marijuana is a different case. Marijuana use peaks around age 18 and slowly drops down into your 20s. So a lot of young people, a lot of teenagers are using this drug. One of the main things that marijuana use has been linked to, unfortunately, is exacerbation or worsening of mental illness. So young adults that are predisposed to mental illness or have an underlying mental disorder, marijuana has actually made them worse. So that is one of the unfortunate things coming out about marijuana use that is going to be studied more as we go over the next few years. Sexually, we all know how alcohol can cause issues, but we don't know as much about marijuana. However, one study did show that there was a 28% decrease in sperm count in males who are using marijuana chronically. You wanna be very careful when it comes to this. A lot of my bodybuilding buddies also like to use different uh, performance enhancing drugs, which also lowers, lowers your sperm count. So if you're trying to have a child and you're on performance enhancing drugs with marijuana for sleep or some other issue like that, your chances of getting pregnant are much, much lower. That's either a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're looking at, but just keep that in mind. During pregnancy, both alcohol and marijuana still suck. Just don't do it. Europe and other countries have a lot less stringent rules on this. They'll say, oh, well, it's okay to have a couple drinks. It's okay to have uh, a little bit of marijuana, but there is no set amount of alcohol or marijuana that is safe in pregnancy because all the studies go back and forth, back and forth. So marijuana use, alcohol use, until we know and prove that it's completely 100% safe, is not gonna cause any issues, don't do it. Sleep with marijuana. Now, a lot of people use marijuana for sleep, saying it gives them better dreams, they sleep better, they have better REM sleep, more restful sleep, but the data actually shows otherwise. Both alcohol and marijuana users were tested, and everybody knows how alcohol can affect your sleep, getting to sleep, etc. In the acute phase, meaning in the first couple weeks of using alcohol versus using marijuana, they both acted the same. They both put people to sleep faster. They both gave people more restful sleep. They both allowed people to sleep for longer. Now, after chronic use, weeks of use, months of use, both marijuana and alcohol did the opposite. They actually increased sleep latency, meaning that patients couldn't go to sleep as fast. It decreased sleep efficacy, meaning that patients were not staying asleep and it decreased restfulness of sleep, meaning that patients were not getting into that REM sleep fast enough or long enough during the night. So alcohol and marijuana over chronic use actually acted the same. It made your sleep worse. So those who are trying to use it for sleep, it's okay to use it in the acute phase, a couple weeks, maybe pushing it for two months, but just remember you keep using it, it's actually gonna make your sleep worse. So bodybuilders who are using it for rest or to get in the zone during bodybuilding, short periods of time are probably better than long periods of time. Alcohol is not good for bodybuilding at all, so just that's, that's neither here nor there. When it comes to the medical world, 
Alcohol versus marijuana, there's really no comparison. There is really not a lot that we use alcohol for in the medical world, except for alcohol withdrawal. We actually have alcohol in the ER to give patients who are about to withdraw from alcohol because withdrawing from alcohol is deadly, is one of the worst drugs to come off of. Now marijuana, we don't have withdrawal data as much because it's so new, but it, there doesn't seem to be much in terms of the side effects of withdrawals. And we do know that marijuana has a lot more medicinal uses, pain management, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, along with those memory issues, seizure uh, treatments, cancer treatments, lots and lots and lots of marijuana related medical treatments. That's the data. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'm Dr. Alex Spinoso. If you like this video, let me know. Subscribe below. Leave a comment. DM me, Alex Spinoso underscore MD. I love your questions. I'm going to keep answering them. Thanks for watching.